Welcome to Internet Protocol with Tish. I'm Letitia Mile. Okay, think fast. I want you to imagine what the average computer user must look like. That's right, right now. Imagine the average computer savvy person and what they look like. And where does he or she use their computer? I bet the average computer user many of you pictured is that person hanging out at a local coffee shop with their laptop connected to Wi-Fi. Or that teenager walking through the mall texting. Or maybe you even pictured yourself buried in a spreadsheet or designing in Photoshop or gaming or answering a pile of emails. But most people I run the scenario by almost never imagine a senior citizen playing cards online or an elderly woman searching Google for her ancestors. And speaking of senior citizens and computers, some people tell me their grandparents don't even know how to turn on a computer. Still others assume, of course, that all elderly people just simply hate technology. Well, many of us just presume that people in their golden years have given up on technology, surrendered, and honestly, couldn't care less about it. But that's not the case anymore. Dan Wagner, Internet Protocol's executive producer, went to the popular retirement community of Vero Beach, Florida. And he found that seniors these days are a lot more tech savvy than you might think. Hi, Dan. Well, hi there, Tish. You know, we arrived here in Vero Beach not really knowing what we'd find. Like you said, it's mainly a retirement community. But we quickly found out that senior citizens here are debunking stereotypes. And the same is true across the country. Seniors don't want to play shuffleboard anymore. They'd rather update their Facebook pages and check out YouTube. John Meikle's job is also his passion. He loves helping senior citizens get online. I mainly go out to customers' homes that, that have problems with their computer. And uh, I, I concentrate mainly on senior citizens because I know there's a, a need for that. And I hear so many horror stories of how different computer shops has taken them and because they do not know any better. And I'm trying to give them a good, honest, reliable, economical service. And what a service it is. Meikle tailors his computer classes to the specific needs of his clients. Then he drives anywhere along Florida's Treasure Coast teaching senior citizens in their homes on their computers. And, and they mainly call me with, if they got virus error messages or if the computer doesn't come on or it's not running right, they'll call me. Or they, they also call me to, if they need help learning how to do email or if they need help learning how to do Skype. Learning Skype was on the minds of Tom and Avalon McGann when they called Meikle. The retired couple wanted to learn to video chat on Skype to stay in touch with their family and friends across the country. So as you notice on your desktop here and on that computer, these are both same screens mm -hmm. that, that we, Skype's installed, okay? okay. And so all you have to do is just double click on that to launch it. Okay, as you notice here, this is where all your contacts appear. So, so when you add your nephews or grandson to whatever, their names are all appear, and as you notice, there's no contacts in there. So I'm going to show you how to add a contact, okay? All you have to do is add a contact. Patiently to teaching to seniors how to use a wide variety of software programs one step at a time is the key to Meikle's success. And thanks to companies like his PC Repairs for Seniors, more and more senior citizens are quickly becoming computer savvy and are taking technology with them everywhere they go. Uh, we go on cruises once in a while, and my wife is down once a day to go on the computer just to get the mail and, and things like that to find out what's going on. So, uh, hey, when we go away just for overnight, we go up to visit my son in Tallahassee, we take the computer with us because we're always, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's, not a, it's not a convenience, it's a necessity. It's, uh, you know, it's, it, it, takes the, it takes all the news with you and it makes it all available to you uh, anytime you want to turn it on. And like I said, in order to call somebody, all you just click on their name to highlight them, okay? But if there's no green, they're not there, yeah, so... Yeah, if it's not green, they're not online. Okay. And then it's click on video call, and, and on the other end, it, it beeps like this too to tell, you, tell them that somebody's calling them. I see. Okay? Hello. Hello. Hi. We're all set up this time. How are you? Uh -huh. Oh, I'm doing good. How are okay. you guys doing? Good, okay. thanks. You're still so, doing your puzzles? Yeah. I finished it yesterday. Okay. Oh, no. And there's several things here at the top you can see here, okay? 
if you want to just take a picture of this, uh -huh. a snapshot, you can click here and it does a snapshot. Or if you wanted to go full screen, click on full screen right here. Oh, I see. It'll make a big full okay. screen, uh -huh. okay? I just go on there and I go into Google, anything I want. If I get a prescription and I want to know exactly what it's all about, I go in there, type up. It gives you hundreds and hundreds of uh, answers to any possible question you would have about it. It's just, and, and that has to do with anything, not just prescription. I mean, it has to do with any question that you have. It's, everything is right there. It's, it's an amazing technology tool. When you get to be our age, we don't go out dancing, we don't go out to the bar rooms anymore. Um, there's a lot of things that, arthritis and a lot of things, you know, that we're uh, just can't do anymore like we used to do. And this fills up our time. I don't know without them. I, I just don't know what I would do without the computer. And Avalon is not alone. The number of senior citizens who were also members of social networks doubled in the last year alone. Some estimates say over 27 million senior citizens in America use the Internet regularly. Another thing that I think of once in a while, I think of older people that are in retired communities and who have lost their husband or their wife and uh, they're living alone. And with the computer, they would never have to be alone. They could be on there all day long doing something because no matter what your uh, hobby would be in life, there is plenty of it on there. So it's, uh, it would be something that I think could help people in their old age not be lonely, not be so lonesome. The McGann say their lives really have changed for the better ever since they hired John Meikle to help ease them onto the internet. And he explains it all to them step by step in simple everyday terms that make sense to them. And I also wanted to share this with you. Nielsen Wire, the online division of the Nielsen's ratings company, has created a top 10 list of the things senior citizens do online. Here, let's check it out. Number 10, they read business and financial news. Nine, they search recipes and plan their meals. Number eight, they plan trips and book tickets on cruises and airlines. Seven, check personal health care information like researching their prescriptions. Six, they follow political news. Five, view family photos online. Four, pay their bills. Three, they check the weather. Number two, they would get directions and print maps. And the number one thing that seniors do online these days is check their personal email, just like the rest of us. Tish. Thanks, Dan. Let's write some internet protocol to help more seniors get online. First of all, senior citizens should take it slowly. Learning to use technology will seem overwhelming, but if you take it in small doses, you'll understand it better and you're gonna feel more comfortable around it. Take Avalon's advice and focus on one of your hobbies, but do it online. You'll be amazed at how many other seniors are already on the web and have formed communities of people who are interested in the same things. And it'll be easier to learn technology if you're exploring something that's already interesting to you. Remember, you cannot break the computer or the mouse or any other part of the system simply by clicking on the wrong place. And almost anything you do by accident can easily be undone. Try to find a professional to help you who's patient and teaches without using highly technical terms, preferably someone who is close by so you can work around your schedule and class times and constraints. Also remember you'll be hiring this person to help you. They make their living at it and it'll be wise if you speak with them up front about what you can expect to pay for their time and training services. And don't be too hard on yourself. Learning technology can actually be a lot of fun, but don't convince yourself that you'll never catch on. A computer will take some time to get used to, but after a few weeks, it will all start to make sense and using it will become second nature, so don't worry. If you decide to buy a computer, ask your trainer if he or she wouldn't mind helping you shop for the right one. I imagine most trainers would be happy to help out and may even set it up for you. They can help you pick out the system that's just right for you and your budget. Don't be intimidated to ask any questions if you may have some. If your trainer starts using computer lingo that you don't understand, tell them to explain what they're talking about. Ask them to use words or examples that make more sense to you. For example, a Facebook status box may seem confusing at first until someone explains that using it is just like tacking a note up on your door for everyone to see. Also make sure your trainer helps you explore the various search engines. They usually have funny names like Google, Yahoo, and Bing. 
but they basically all do the same thing. They're directories of everything on the internet. You simply type in what you're looking for and that search engine will give you many, many pages of websites pertaining to that topic. Search engines can be powerful tools to help you explore the internet. They begin with very basic functionality and with a click, you can enable more advanced search features. And probably the best advice we can offer senior citizens who make the decision to go online is to make connections with friends, family, and other people sharing your same interests. Technology can really bring people together, especially for those who have the time and the desire to connect. So there you have it, Internet Protocol on Senior Citizens Getting Online. Thanks so much for joining us on Internet Protocol with Tish. We look forward to seeing you again next time.